I'm having a lot of fun with the Marvels as we get closer and closer to that movie's release. It's really fun watching Marvel Studios promote this film, doing stuff like this where they make little 30-second trailers saying that the characters are just like us because Captain Marvel wears Crocs. So they're, they're just like us. Just like us. Monica Rambeau, you see, she, she dances with wine in one of the scenes. She's just like us. And they make sure to put... <laughs> Brie Larson in the in the tank top that she's busting out of. The, she's in everything in this tank top now because they know they know dudes like it, which is funny because there was nothing like this in the first one. But anyway, this movie, don't think it's going to do well. In fact, most of the tracking for the movie says it's not going to do well. And the excuse making is already going full throttle. Now, over at the Hollywood Reporter, they're blaming superhero fatigue. Oh, it's because of superhero fatigue that the movie is going going to bomb and is only tracking at 75 to 80 million for its debut. That's bad. That's bad. It's from what I understand, 50% lower than what the first one came out as. We're going to find out just how popular Captain Marvel is when this movie drops. Because as I've pointed out before, and I'm not the only one that's pointed this out, the first one was sandwiched between two of the biggest movies of all time. And because of that, and they told you, you need to see this movie. You want to understand what's happening in Avengers Endgame? Well, you're going to need to go see Captain Marvel even though you really didn't need to see that movie. You could have skipped it completely. And she would have just shown up in the new movie, and that would have been that. But no, you needed to see that movie. So they tricked a lot of people into seeing it. And now they don't really have that resource. Uh, They thought they could make some kind of mini Avengers event made off of shitty Disney Plus shows, and that's not going to happen. So the movie is tracking low, but now they're saying superhero fatigue. I don't really know if superhero fatigue is a thing. I can tell you what really is a thing. That's bad movie fatigue. Because everything that Marvel's put out, minus Guardians of the Galaxy 3, has been low viewed and had a low box office. Especially Quantum Mania. From what I understand, uh, I think it was in that new book that I... I did purchase today. I want to read it. It's called The Reign of Marvel Studios. It's a lot of dirt in that book. I'm going to, I just ordered it off of Amazon today. I should have it in two days. I'm going to read that book and go through it and see, uh, see what's in there. Maybe we can talk about it this weekend. Uh, because a lot of the articles that have been coming out based on that book, there's a lot of juice in there. So I want to see, I want to see what's said. But I guess Quantum Mania, everyone thought it was going to be a big hit. This is, this is going to be the massive kickoff. And end our woes, and, well, that didn't happen. Things have only gotten worse for Marvel since that movie came out, minus the Guardians of the Galaxy little phenomenon. But that movie did good based on word of mouth and the fact that everyone likes those characters and James Gunn was still attached to it. So you kind of knew what you were getting when you go in to see that movie. When you went in to see that movie, you kind of knew what you are getting. Uh, With the Marvels, you know what you're getting as well. You're getting a goofy piece of shit. I mean, the director came out and was like, yeah, you know what makes our movie better than the other movies? What's going to be real goofy? (laughs) <laughs> no one no one wants that. So superhero fatigue is now the big reason why this movie is going to fail. Superhero fatigue. It's bad movie fatigue. Because if you put out a good one, I think it would do well. Guardians of the Galaxy did well. Why did it do well? Word of mouth. Uh, everyone out said it's a good movie. Go see it. Uh, it's not going to happen for the Marvels. So we'll see what happens. One quick other story. Uh, There was a quote the other day about how they have not even begun to modernize James Bond. And when I read it, I'm like thinking to myself, is this a threat? (laughs) Because it sounded like it. Uh, Barbara Broccoli, I believe she is the James Bond producer, and she's kind of like one of the head people in charge of James Bond. 
Uh, she's come out and said that they are not done reinventing the character. They haven't even begun the process yet uh, for getting new stories ready for the modern world. Now, the last movie lost money. I know it had a huge box office. Where is it at? $759.9 million, but because of the way that movie was handled with delays and reshoots, it ended up losing $100 million because it needed to make $900 million to make money. So it ended up losing money. Uh, very, very bad news for that movie. Uh, it's only going to get worse for James Bond because all the things that really made that character who he is, they've kind of just thrown away. And, like, you know, when I say that, I refer to his his womanizing, his drinking, his smoking. He's a, the drinking and smoking, I'm sure many people are going to say, I mean, big deal, but these are little things with the character that are very important to him because James Bond at the at the end of the day is supposed to be a male power fantasy and you've taken away like the core aspect of the character there's a million action spy movies released and like over a year over a couple the past couple of years there's been a bunch of action spy movies and what makes James Bond different is the fact that he's James Bond, and now he's just like every other action spy character. And that's not what's going to keep this character around for another hundred years. I don't know when he came out. Like it's well, when did James Bond come out? The nineteen sixties, fifties, in book form. You know, so he's been around for a long time. And when you change these these traits to him that have made him so timeless. You're end up you're you're gonna take everything that was special about him away. I I can only imagine what modernizing him even more looks like because he was already kind of a sissy wimp in the last one. He was nothing like the regular James Bond that we all know and love. And I'm sure there's gonna be people that disagree with me on this, but I, I don't think the Daniel Craig character, other than two movies, I liked Casino Royale. Kind of worked as an origin story. You know, he wasn't fully the James Bond that we know then. And I liked Skyfall. Other than that, I didn't care for the rest of the Daniel Craig movies. I thought they were trying to copy. It felt like they were trying to copy Jason Bourne to there. And he's not. Jason Bourne isn't James Bond, and James Bond isn't Jason Bourne. So I think this franchise is done. I think the next movie is going to be a disaster. And it will likely kill the franchise, and then they'll have to reboot it again. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments below. I'd like to hear from you. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell. Check out my Rumble and Locals, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Make sure to check out my Locals. There's a link in the description. It's a fun community that I'm trying to build over here. If you don't want to support me on YouTube... You can come over here. None of that money goes to YouTube. You also can just come over here for free. But if you are a supporter over here, I do plan on doing an extra live stream once a month and throwing links to the supporters so you can actually come on and have a supporter live stream with me. Also, it's a good place to catch all of my content. You don't have to worry about notifications like YouTube. They'll definitely work over here. So come check out my locals.